Flipping is by far the number one moneymaker in old school RuneScape, and today I'll teach you how to flip from scratch without having any prior knowledge of flipping. Even if you have no idea what flipping is, I'll teach you everything you need to know and you can start generating millions of GP just by trading items. This guide is going to be broken down into multiple sections. First, we'll walk through the complete basics of flipping, then progress into some additional flipping concepts and tips that are helpful for beginners. We'll finish off the guide with a live walkthrough of a flipping session, putting all the concepts that we cover in the guide together in a live example. This guide has a ton of information on flipping, so if you're familiar with any of the topics, feel free to skip around with the timestamps in the description. I put in a ton of effort to aggregate all this information into one guide, so if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to drop a like, and if you have any questions on flipping, be sure to drop them in the comments section below. Flipping is by far RuneScape's best moneymaker, which is why I always encourage every player to learn how to flip. It is the only moneymaker where you can make significant amounts of profit while you're logged off, and is also the only moneymaker that scales with how much GP you have. As a rough example, while you may be able to make 1 mil an hour with a 10 mil cash stack, you could potentially make 3 to 4 mil an hour with 100 mil, and so on and so forth. Flipping is the act of buying and selling items for a profit. You may have heard the saying, buy low and sell high, which is a simple generalization for the objective of flipping. In the early days of RuneScape, players would participate in a player-run market where players had to seek out the item they were looking to buy or sell among hundreds of other players. The two traders would chat and eventually agree on a price, and the transaction would be completed. In the modern state of the game, almost all trades exist on the Grand Exchange, which is an automated market that matches buyers and sellers based on item price listings. The Grand Exchange has hundreds of thousands of trades and trade offers across the entire player base at any given time. The basic concept of flipping is buying a quantity of an item at a cheap price and turning around and selling it for a higher price to another player, taking advantage of the price movements in the large game economy. Flipping has very few requirements, but there are some strong recommendations that you should consider. If you are a members player, then you can go in and flip with any amount of cash whenever you'd like, but if you are a free-to-play player, the only true requirement is to have your trade restrictions removed. You can remove your trade restrictions by reaching a total skill level of 100, having 20 hours of in-game playtime, and achieving 10 quest points. As a side note, this restriction gets removed if you have membership, which is why you can flip right away when you are a member. Once you have access to the Grand Exchange, there are no other requirements to flip, but there are certainly some recommendations that will also vary from free-to-play to members. For free-to-play, you can start flipping with any amount of cash, but if you are brand new to flipping and trying to learn, I usually recommend players start with 500k. This will give you access to flipping 2-3 to three items at once, and you actually will be able to turn an okay profit with 500k and start to see how powerful flipping can be. If you are a members player, you'll have access to a lot more items to flip, so I recommend you start with a minimum of 5 million GP, with a strong recommendation for 10 million GP. Again, just like free to play, this will give you access to flipping multiple quality items at once, and will allow you to begin to see the power of flipping and how much profit you can really make. Also, in a member's world, you're going to have access to 8 item slots on the Grand Exchange versus the 3 item slots that you will have available in free to play, which means you can make a lot more per hour on that one account with membership. Now that we've covered what flipping is and some general requirements around flipping, let's dive in to how flipping actually works and walk through a basic example of how you can calculate potential profit. At the end, I'll walk through another example from start to finish so you can see how I calculated profitable flips in real time. On the Grand Exchange, any tradable item at any given moment will have both a buy price and a sell price. To make things simpler, a lot of flippers refer to these prices as the insta-buy and insta-sell prices, the price you can instantly buy or instantly sell an item for. The difference between both the buy and the sell prices is called the margin, which is where a flipper generates his profit. 
Before we dive deeper into how we calculate margins and profit, I want to cover a common misunderstanding I see with buy and sell margins. When looking at an item's price graph, you may notice that the sell price is always sitting below the buy price, which may seem counterintuitive. That is because these buy and sell prices are representing the instant buy and the instant sell prices of an item. For example, if you wanted to instantly buy a death rune, you would pay 206 GP, but if you wanted to instantly sell it, you would only get 205 GP. As stated before, the margin is the difference between the buy price and the sell price of an item. In our example, the margin for trading a rune arrow is 2 GP. Now this can be calculated by subtracting the buy price from the sell price, so 88 GP minus 86 GP equals 2 GP. So the margin for every rune arrow that we flip is going to be 2 GP. We know that if we instantly buy and sell a rune arrow, we're going to lose 1 GP. But if we change our instant sell price to our buy price and our instant buy price to our sell price, we can actually make a profit. If we put a buy offer in for the rune arrow at 86 GP and sold it for 88 GP, we would profit 2 GP for every single rune arrow we trade. This is the entire premise of flipping, buying items for their cheaper price and selling them for their higher price. Doing so takes time, but does generate profit. Of course, a 2 GP profit isn't very good, but what happens if we do this at scale? So imagine we listed a buy offer for 10,000 rune arrows. By selling those 10,000 rune arrows back, we could make 20,000 GP in profit by only trading one item. You can calculate your total profit on a flip by adding the quantity you are going to flip into the equation. Take your profit margin and multiply it by the quantity that you are flipping, and that will get you your estimated profit. There is one other factor that will affect our profit calculation, and that is Grand Exchange Tax. Anytime you sell an item on the Grand Exchange that is over 100 GP, you're going to be taxed at 1% of the sell price, up to a maximum tax cost of 5 million GP. So if you sell an item worth 500 GP, you will be taxed 5 GP and only receive 495 GP back. This will factor into our margin equation for any item you plan on selling that is over 100 GP. We can calculate our profit with the tax by taking the price we plan to sell at, multiplying it by 1%, and subtracting it from our original sell price. Here is a pro tip. If you're like me and you're not a math guy, here is a very simple trick to calculate tax quickly. Take your sell price and move the decimal over two digits to the left. So, if your sell price is 500 GP, move the decimal place over two spaces, you get 5 GP. That is going to be the tax per item. Remember that tax only plays into your profit calculation. You do not want to calculate tax and then use the tax pricing for listing your sell offer. Now that we've walked through all of the flipping math you'll need to know, let's do a full example putting all the concepts of calculating potential profit together. Let's try flipping some manta rays. Now, let's say that the current instant sell price on manta rays is 1,275 GP, and the instant buy price is 1,307 GP. Remember that our instant sell price is actually our buy price, and our instant buy price is actually our sell price. To make it simple, the lower price will always be the price we want to buy at. Subtracting our buy price from our sell price is going to give us our profit margin per manta ray. Since our sell price is 1,307 GP, we need to include tax in our profit estimate. Because we plan to sell manta rays at 1,307 GP, I know that we're going to pay a 13 GP tax for every single manta ray we sell. Including tax, we can expect a 19 GP profit for every single manta ray that we flip. Using the profit margin, we can add the quantity of manta rays that we'd like to flip to get our estimated profit. So 19 GP times 10,000 manta rays is going to equal 190k in potential profit. By calculating the margin and the potential profit, you can now analyze any item and tell if it is worth it to flip it or not. With the basics of flipping covered, we can move on to some additional flipping concepts. Now this section is not essential to learn how to flip, 
but it will be helpful if you want to learn how the overall Grand Exchange works, or if you want to eventually progress past a beginner level of knowledge. If that is not important to you, feel free to skip ahead in this video to the live flipping example. Let's talk a little bit about volume. So volume is the number of times an item is traded in a specific time frame. You may hear players refer to the daily volume of an item, or the number of times an item is traded per day. Volume affects the flipping behavior of an item. So in general, items with a higher flipping volume will flip quicker and be less risky to flip, but also generate a smaller profit. Common examples of high volume items are runes, arrows, and other ammo types, as well as food. Conversely, lower volume items tend to flip slower, have less stable margins, but generate a larger profit. Common examples of low volume items are endgame gear and weapons, uncommon cosmetic items such as clue scroll items, as well as obscure niche items that are hardly used in the game. If you're a beginner learning how to flip, you should only focus on high volume items. High volume flips have much less risk than low volume flips and are way easier to make a profit on as the margins are a lot more stable. Also, high volume items tend to be a lot cheaper than low volume items per item, which means a beginner could flip multiple high volume items at once. Here is a list of 8 free-to-play and 8 members items that are safe and high volume that you can try to get started on your flipping journey. If you want more item ideas, be sure to watch the flipping resources and tools section later in this video. Every tradable item on the Grand Exchange has a maximum limit that you're allowed to purchase every 4 hours, which is referred to as an item's buy limit. Items with a higher trade volume tend to have higher 4 hour limits, for example, you can buy 10,000 sharks every 4 hours, but you can only buy 8 Bandos chest plates every 4 hours. This limit resets 4 hours after your first purchase of the item. Buy limit is displayed on most price tracking websites, so you can always refer there if you're not sure what an item's buying limit is. Most players learning how to flip think that flipping is just one standard process of trading items. But in reality, there are different styles of flipping that involve varying levels of risk and timeframes. Active flipping is the most well-known form of flipping and is the easiest to learn, and is the style of flipping that we are covering in this beginner guide. Active flipping is when you are logged on and you are bank standing, trading your flips quote-unquote on margin, or taking advantage of the margin being displayed at the exact moment you are flipping the item. Active flipping relies on buying and selling flips as soon as they complete, and keeping an eye on the active margins for each item that you flip. This style of flipping has the least amount of risk, because you are holding the items for a shorter amount of time, giving the item's price less time to move up or down. Overnight flipping is when you are trading an item anywhere between an 8-16 to 16 hour time frame. It's typically referred to as overnight flipping because players will set buy offers before they log off for the night and sell those items back in the morning. This style of flipping is riskier than active flipping because you're holding an item for a longer time frame with overnight flipping compared to active flipping. The player is logged off for the majority of time it takes to complete these flips and requires a lot less time investment than active flipping and can still be quite profitable. Passive flipping is a style of flipping where you focus on consistent, stable items over a time frame of 1-3 to three hours. Passive flippers are players who are flipping while they're playing OSRS and buy and sell their items when they make a visit back to the Grand Exchange. Passive flipping focuses on stable items, so you do not need to rush to the Grand Exchange immediately to manage your flips. For example, a player may list some safe, high-volume flips using the hourly margin, and then go do an endgame raid or a boss. They know that they'll be back to the Grand Exchange in about an hour or two, and the flips that they've listed will likely hold their margin over that time. Passive flipping is typically less profitable than active flipping, but it does allow you to do other money-making methods in-game, so your total profit per hour could be higher by using this style of flipping. Market Maker Flipping or Market Making is a style of flipping where you capitalize on large quantities of extremely stable, small-margin items. 
items like mithril darts or buckets of sand, which fluctuate in a very small price range. The goal behind this is to have a worry-free style of flipping where you don't have to check your flips very often and can rely on consistent profit over time. Many market makers check their flips every 3-7 to seven days, and market making provides a small amount of profit but is very reliable. This is a style of flipping that I use on my multi-account flipping video as well as in my OSRS investment portfolio series. Bulk flipping is a unique style of flipping where you're capitalizing on the fact that there are 4-hour buying limits. In-game, a lot of players are looking to get a massive quantity of some highly traded items, such as runes or dart tips. And because they want such a large quantity instantly, they'll pay a premium price that is slightly above their current price. Similar to market makers, bulk flippers list large quantities of an item to buy, but then they have to find a seller outside of the Grand Exchange to get that premium price. So let's say for example, you wanted to bulk trade fire runes. Over a couple of weeks, you are able to buy 10 million fire runes at 6 GP each. Eventually, you find a buyer who is willing to pay 6.3 GP each for every fire rune, paying extra for each rune because they can buy it from you and avoid the 4 hour limits. That trade is going to net you about 3 million GP in profit, and was very low risk, it just took a lot of time. I don't typically do bulk flipping, but it is a safe style of flipping that does require a large cash stack to get started, and involves some work outside of the Grand Exchange as well. Investing is the most hands-off style of flipping, but can lead to some massive returns over a longer time frame. There are really two types of investment styles, Update Investing and Value Investing Update investors rely on researching upcoming updates and speculating on what items will be popular in the future, playing off the momentum and price movements of items discussed on blog posts or Jagex livestreams. Value investors look at item prices that are very cheap in relation to their high price, and they place large buy offers to pick up a large amount of the item while the price is low. Update investing is extremely risky, but is more profitable in most instances than value investing, where value investing is typically a bit less risky, but is slightly less profitable and takes much longer. Investing requires a massive cash stack, and I would not even consider investing until you're comfortable locking away a billion GP for upwards of 6 months or more. One piece of information which is good for beginner flippers to keep in mind is that the more money you have to flip with, the more profit potential you actually have. With more cash, you have access to flipping more items, and more expensive items. Higher price items tend to have less competition when active flipping because less people can afford to buy them and sell them on margin. With every style of flipping, the more money you have, the more money you're going to be able to make. Over the years, the flipping community has grown a ton, and a bunch of great tools have been created to assist people in learning how to flip and flip day to day. The first one that I'd like to shout out is my own personal Discord group. If you have Discord and you want to learn more about flipping, I have a Discord dedicated to teaching people how to flip and make money in OSRS. So if you'd like to join and get some one-on-one -on -one help with learning how to flip, or to use our item list that we have available for free, be sure to join us with the link in the description below. Price graphs and item prices are a large part of flipping these days. There are two sites that I recommend using, and that is the Price Cloud, prices.osrs.cloud, which actually links with the Flipping Utilities plugin, and getracker.com. Now both of these sites have their pros and cons, so I'll let you explore which one you like best. Both products are free, but have premium features that are offered to give you an edge over other flipping competition. We are affiliated with both GE Tracker and Flipping Utilities, so if you'd like a discount on either product, I highly recommend using the link in the description below to save some money. The Flipping Utilities plugin is a must-have in my honest opinion. They have a free version you can download from the plugin hub in RuneLight, and it will help you keep track of your flipping profits over time, and it has a very easy to understand interface. We will be using the Flipping Utilities plugin in our live flipping example to track our profits and show you how it works. 
Let's hop into our live example of how you can flip in OSRS. We're going to be flipping with a 10 million GP cash stack. This is a realistic and strong starting amount if you're learning how to flip in RuneScape. If you have less than this, then that will work as well. You're just not going to make as much profit. We will be flipping only members items in this video using all 8 grand exchange slots. So if you are a free to play player, I would recommend going and checking out my channel and looking at one of the free to play live examples. That'll give you a few more item ideas. But if you want to stick around for a modern guide, the principles will be the exact same. You just have to use them on free to play items. Only other thing you'll need besides a starting cash stack is a price tracking website. I like to use the prices.osrs.cloud site. It's completely free and I love the graphs on the site, but we're going to use this to look at margins on items. That way it'll save us a lot of time. Let's hop into it. We're going to be flipping primarily high volume items with our 10 million GP cash stack because high volume items are very safe to flip and they're going to flip relatively quickly so we can get a lot of flips going with a 10 mil stack. Let's try and list these blood runes first. The way that I do active flipping is I pull up the price graph and go to the one day view and then I take a look at the active margin and currently where it's been trending over the past hour. Right now it looks like we can buy some of these blood runes for around 227 GP and although the margin is 1 GP right now based on the graph, I think we can sell them for a little bit more, maybe around 232 or 233 GP. Remember that high volume items don't fluctuate that much, they're relatively stable, but they will make small price movements which can make your flips more profitable than they actually appear. So now we know we want to buy blood runes at 227 GP, so let's go ahead and put an offer in. I think we can flip about 10,000 blood runes, which should going to cost us about 2.2 mil. Remember, when we put this offer in, we want to try and split our entire cash stack up across as many slots as we can. The more slots we flip with, the less risk we're going to take on because there is a higher chance collectively we're going to make profit on these flips if we have more items in the grand exchange. If one item fails, the profit from the other flips will make up for the difference. The next listing we're going to put in is the soul runes. Now you'll notice again the margin is minus 1 GP because the current margin on the item is only 1 GP and since we have to pay a 2 GP tax we're actually going to lose 1 GP for every single soul rune that we flip at these prices. So we're not going to use the exact active margin prices we're going to list a little bit lower. I think we can buy some soul runes for 235 GP and sell around the 240 to 241 GP range just based on the recent trend of the item. The margin moved slightly on the blood runes so I went ahead and adjusted the price on those. We'll let those sit for a little bit and we'll let the soul runes sit as well. We still have 5 million to list on the grand exchange so let's find some other items. Another flip I want to list is the Zolver Scales. Now, the Zolver Scales are actually looking like they have a pretty good graph right now. The active margin is 115 to 117, which is a 1GP margin, including the tax. From the graphs alone, I think we should be able to buy them for 115, but be able to sell them around 120, which is going to make us a 4GP margin for every single Zolver Scale that we flip. And look at that, it's only been a couple of minutes and we already have a bunch of the blood runes bought. So since we have another flipping slot open right now, well, they just finished. So we'll actually just turn around and sell these for 233 to 234 GP. We'll do 233 just to keep it safe and to get the profit started. And just like that, basically instantly sold because the market is very hot right now. That will happen to you and if it does happen just take the profits and walk away happy looks like from the blood runes alone we made about a 30k profit which is not too bad considering how quick that was one thing that i recommend is if an item works out really well for you and you can still flip more of it why not go back and flip a lot more of that item so we're going to go back and list another 10,000 blood runes for 228 GP and try to sell them for 233 or maybe even 234 to 35 GP considering how fast they sold last time. We're just going to keep listing high volume safe items and letting these flips play out. 
I typically let a high volume flip sit for around five to six minutes. If it doesn't start to buy, depending on how the graph looks, I will adjust the prices a little bit because again, high volume flipping, you want to flip a lot of volume. That's how you're gonna generate your profit. So you don't want your cash stack to be sitting idle and for your items not to be buying. I think of flipping as a mix between an art and a science. For a lot of these items, you really don't need to get the exact price listing especially when you're considering high volume items because they fluctuate around by a two to three GP range. So you can actually list them and just wait for them to sell. You don't need to stare at the graphs and think of the perfect buy and sell prices. I get a lot of questions about reading price graphs and you just don't really need to be exact when you're flipping high volume items. Just look at where the price is traded over the past 30 minutes to an hour and list around those like hourly lows and try to sell it near their hourly highs. Again, you're just looking for the average strong margin. You're trying to get a lot of trades in at a profitable standpoint. We're listing these soul runes back for 241 GP each. We bought them at 235 GP each. So that's gonna make us a four GP profit for every single soul rune that we flip. All right, we have all of our items in and we are actually making a pretty good profit right now. 58k since we started this session 15 minutes ago, which doesn't seem like a lot, but these flips are going to start cooking for us really soon. Now that we have all of our flips listed and we're constantly buying and selling items back and forth, what you want to do in this situation is just monitor your flips. Make sure you're on margin for a lot of this stuff and things aren't crashing or spiking on you. You just want to ensure your offers are competitive. Also, just keep an eye out in case an offer finishes, so you can obviously list more quantity. This Manta Ray margin right now is really good, 9 GP for every Manta Ray we flip, and they are flipping extremely quick. A lot of items are starting to buy and sell. This is exactly what you want to see when you are active flipping. And there we go on the Zolver scales as well, 4 GP margin, so that is a 40k profit. We're going to go back in and flip another 10,000 of those. One question I get a lot from new players learning how to flip is, what should I do when an item does not trend in the direction that I'm looking for, or is just not selling off for the price that I want? For example, it has been 7 minutes since we've sold any blood runes, and a lot of players get stuck in the situation on what to do. Generally, what I will do is if I'm still in a profitable situation, I will lower the flip to its active margin to be able to sell, but if you wait a little bit longer, maybe say, 20 to 30 minutes it's pretty much guaranteed that this will sell for 234 gp because it's only one gp above its current margin price if you just wait for things to fluctuate slightly in your favor you can make a profit but keep in mind you need to trade a lot of items when you're flipping high volume with a 10 mil cash stack because that's actually how you'll generate money so in this example, I'm going to cancel the Blood Rune offer. I'm going to lower this to 232 GP and we'll sell off the rest of the Blood Runes. We're also going to lower the margin on these. Oh, never mind. I was about to lower the margin on the Soul Runes because it was taking just a little bit too long, but we just sold off a large chunk of them. So I'm going to wait for that to work in our favor. Generally, while I'm waiting for items to buy and sell, I will be scanning the price website to try to find new items to flip. One thing I forgot to mention towards the beginning is you really want to flip with a flipping list in mind. So this is going to be a list of as many items that you flipped in the past to help you stay on track during these flipping sessions. So for example, manta rays are on my flipping list as well as blood runes. So I always know to check them when I sign on to a flipping session to keep things as efficient as possible. Starting to notice that these amethyst arrows are not really buying, they're taking up a lot of time, and they're taking up a full item slot, so I might cancel these. I'm going to give it another 3 minutes. Alright, checking in, we're currently at 158k in profit, 24 minutes into the session, which is currently 385k GP an hour, just through flipping with 10 million. Keep in mind though, we are flipping the safest items in the game. These are the least likely to lose us profit, which means you're not going to make as much money compared to flipping some more risky items. Generally, the lower the volume the item or the amount of trades an item has, the riskier it is going to be. These Zolver scales are working out really, really nicely. That is our second quantity of them flipped. 80k in profit on these Zolver scales alone. One of my favorite beginner items to flip, just considering how consistent of a performer it is. 
Also, I listed one of my flips for way too much money and I actually pulled money out of my bank automatically. So we're currently at an 11.4 mil total valuation of what we're flipping. I do apologize. I didn't mean to do that. I have the profit track separately. So at the end, I'll be able to tell you exactly how much we made, but I did pull another mil into the cash stack flipping with like 11 to 11.5 mil. Another great item to flip that I just thought of is the cannonballs. The cannonballs flip so quickly, you will not even believe it. And it's just one of my favorite items because you can flip the entire limit for it less than 2 million GP. So it's just really easy to list the entire limit, flip these, and make some easy profit. And there we go, we just hit the limit on these Zolra scales. That is a 120k profit after flipping the entire quantity, which is our best flip so far. We also just got all of the cannonballs as well, so we're going to turn around and sell these for 161 GP each. That is going to be a very quick flip, and look, it literally already sold as I'm recording the clip and checking the price. That is a 77k profit in under two minutes. We just finished flipping our entire limit of blood runes as well. That is 25,000 blood runes flipped for a total of 87k in profit. Continuing to flip for a nice profit right now with a total profit of about 400k. Going to flip for an hour just to see how much we can make, but things are going extremely well right now. And if we're really showcasing how much money you can make with a small cash stack flipping, you really don't need that much to get started. 10 mil is plenty to learn all the basics of flipping. And really get you started on your journey. Out of all the flips so far, the only one that's not really working out too quick for us is these oak planks. They're fluctuating a lot in price around 20 GP swings, which isn't super normal for oak planks. We just got unlucky there, but as you can see, we're still making a good bit of profit just based on all the other flips and how much they're generating for us. It just goes to show you how important it is to list multiple items and spread your cash stack around a bunch of different item slots. It makes your profit a lot safer. Here is an example on the soul runes where the margin actually moved not in our favor and I just held the offer there and it ended up selling only after 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So these margins that are listed on price websites, they don't mean everything. They're just a good guideline for where you can sell these items. There's not much to say on the flipping session right now. Again, just continuing to list new items. And if you're a new flipper, build out that flipping list. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Best way to do this is just by flipping high volume items you find on price websites. Another great way to do it is checking out our Discord group. We have a Discord group that has a free flipping list on there that you can use. That'll at least get you started on some high quality members items. That'll generate a fair bit of profit, but I would also encourage you to find your own items as well. All right, we're 55 minutes into the flipping session, currently at a 559k profit. So we are going to start to wind down the session a little bit. That way I can give you guys an accurate picture of what it looks like to flip for one hour with 10 million GP. All right, I'm listing no more flips at this point. By the time we hit an hour, I'm going to sell back likely what I have. I'm not going to dump things though for a loss. Most likely everything here will actually sell at these prices if I was to wait. So I'm not going to count that against me. Although if I was to sell the oak planks right now, it would probably be a pretty minor loss. And we're officially done. The hour mark has been hit. 574k in profit. I'll show you on screen right now exactly how much money we made from every single item that we flipped. And that is going to wrap up the video today. I hope you guys learned a lot about flipping from this guide. We walked through everything from the complete beginner basics all the way to a live example of how to flip with 10 mil. This guide has been jam-packed with information, but of course, if you need more personal help with how to flip, feel free to join our Discord with the link in the description below. We have a whole community in there that is dedicated to flipping in old school RuneScape, and I'm sure they could teach you a thing or two about flipping. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding the guide, and if you want to see more guides like this, feel free to check out the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.